Hi guys, my name is Lisa Whitehouse and I'm the artist behind Whitehouse Art. Thank you for joining me today for one of my mini tutorials. Be sure to hit subscribe if you want to see other videos like this one. Let's get started. So today I'm going to be walking you through how to paint an orca in rainbow watercolor. So I've already sketched out the orca and now we're going to start by putting down um, some clear water and I'll show you how I start out a painting like this. So I'm going to be moving sort of through a rainbow of colors, but I'm always going to be careful to make the colors that touch each other slightly complementary to each other. So they're not going to be a giant jump from say blue to yellow, because then what happens is it tends to kind of brown the colors. So first things first, I'm going to start with putting a bit of clear water up by the front, being careful not to fill in the parts that are supposed to be left white. So I'm going to go about quarter of the way down the orca, just right here. And then we're going to start with the Prussian blue. So it's quite a dark blue. And we're going to just lay it down around the perimeter of the orca so that it just bleeds its way through. It doesn't fill it in all the way, it just bleeds around. So that's all I am going to do for the front. I like it to be quite dark when it goes down just because as it dries, it's gonna lighten. So then I'm gonna add a little more clear water. And you're gonna notice my brush is a little bit blue, but that's okay, because we're gonna be going over it with purple. So it's gonna disappear. So next I'm gonna get a deep purple and just lay it down beside the blue. I find these colors blend really well together. So you're not going to find that there's a muddying of colors when these two are side by side. I like to keep it darkest towards the outside of the orca, moving lighter towards the inside. So now that I've done the purple, we're going to keep going with some clear water. start to notice a pattern here. I always do a little bit of clear water first. The reason I don't do the whole body right at the beginning is that it dries too fast. So you're going to have to end up re-wetting it anyway. So there's no point in going too far with the clear water. So next up I'm going to do a nice bright pink. So pink and purple look good beside each other. Nice and complementary to each other. So if we do pink next, you might have already guessed it, but after pink is going to go red. So I use quite a saturated red, so I really like to um, allow my brush to pick up quite a bit of the color because I don't want it to be a faded red. Then the pink will just take over anyway. We want that to be a nice bold red. And after the red, a nice color is a, a tiny bit of orange and then move straight to the yellow. So what I'm going to do is take a bit of orange, just place that down here. I only have orange gouache in my palette right now, so it's coming very strong. If you don't know what gouache is, it's essentially a thicker version, a more um, trans, or sorry, more opaque version of the watercolors. So it can come on a little strong if you're not careful. So I'm noticing as I'm moving along that some of the colors are drying quite light. And because I'm trying to avoid that, what we're going to do is go back and add a little bit of pink right here while we can easier to do it while it's still wet so it's okay to kind of bounce around and add a little purple we're just going back to those same spots as we move along and if you find that for whatever reason it dries too fast and you can't go back to it before it dries that's totally okay we can always do another coat over top so I'm gonna move past the yellow now clear water and I'm going to do actually a nice green. So I have a lime green in my palette and it looks really nice with the yellow. I like these two side by side so I tend to use them a lot. You'll notice in some of my pieces. So I find that when the lime green and the teal are side by side they blend really nicely into a medium green. And so what I'm going to do is now use the teal 
right here. And because I always like my little rainbows to go first full circle, I'm actually gonna use the Prussian blue at the back of the orca again. So we begin with the blue and we end with it. And the teal does look really nice with it. So I'm always kind of spinning the painting around so that it's easier to work on it. quite dark at the ends, just like I did at the front, and a little bit of dark here. Now it can be nice to fill in some of these white spots a little bit, so what I'm going to do is take a little bit of the teal and very lightly just add some in and around. And I'm careful not to butt up to any of the orca itself. If I do, you just dry that up. Because we're just wanting to have a subtle, subtle color variation, not perfectly white. So last but not least, we'll do the front here. I'll do a little clear water first. I think that works better. And then it's the line of the teal again. Maybe I'll accent this a little. So I'm going to go ahead and add some splatters in the painting. So while it's still a little bit wet, sometimes it can be nice to add a little splatters. That way some of the pink goes into the purple and vice versa. It's hard to be super targeted with the splatters, so it's okay if some of them go where you don't want them. I'm gonna get my paper towel, and that way we can dab up some of the ones we don't want. So I don't want too many clear water droplets. That way I don't drop my hand on them. I think that looks pretty good. I like to take a look at it. Now I think what we're gonna do, just to differentiate um, the white spots from the background a little bit is I'm gonna go ahead and outline a few spots and just like very lightly not everywhere but just lightly skip the brush off the page in certain spots and if it's still wet that's okay because it's actually gonna bleed in nicely so that's all I wanted to do for that and I think that looks pretty good um, that's all I would do for this piece. So now we're just gonna sign it and uh, let it dry up and I think it looks complete. There we go. I hope you had fun painting this orca with me. Thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you guys had fun. Be sure to check out my other videos for more inspiration and leave a comment below with some ideas that you want to paint. Thank you and see you next video.